Hey everyone, it's Stargirl066 and today we're in the comfort of my bed because I thought that this would be kind of a good just like maybe you have a cup of coffee right now and you're just kind of chilling out in your room or maybe you're on your lunch break at work and you're just kind of taking a break. Um, this is more or less going to be a very very serious video and I'm going to share a lot about my personal story. Um, as you can see by the title of this video, this is going to be all about the two year recovery process that happened with me um so i'm doing this kind of series on my channel i'm sorry that i missed last week's upload i have been going through a phase of depression um so i'm hoping to get out of it soon and it feels like i'm getting back into the swing of things it's more or less like um not so much depression but like stress and anxiety to the point that i'm like worrying about everything so um I'm, I apologize again for not uploading one that last week, uh, but I did have the coping skills video, which you guys can check out in the description box down below, or I'll even put it in the eye, um, so you guys can check that out. But anyways, um, so this video is all about my two-year recovery process. Um, so I'm going to be talking about particularly 2017, 2018, and currently in 2019, but before we get into that, I am going to go into a little bit what happened before 2017 to give you guys some context. Disclaimer here, I'm not going to use any names of people if there's any sort of people that are involved, unless they're in my current life. Um, so when we get to the 2019 part, um, I will use a, a name. I, do, I will be using a name of a YouTuber, but other than that, I won't be using any names. Um, and it'll be very, very confidential, but at the same exact time, I do want to tell my story um, in a very comfortable place for me. A very comfortable, safe place for me is my bed. It's probably my number one safe space, and then I know that I can't judge myself for anything in this space, um, and I'm welcoming you guys in. Um, my dog is here with me, <laughs> too. Um, so he's just going to be chilling and sleeping and stuff. You can't really see him, but maybe he'll come over. Um, when I start to cry and stuff like that, he does get worried and come over to me. So if he senses that, um, he will come over to me and you guys may see him. But we're going to try not to cry in this video, um, even though I know you guys love my little teddy. Uh, he's my dog. Is He's been on my channel multiple times in the past. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy this video and take something out of it in your own life. Um, experience and maybe you can learn something from my experience that you can translate for your own life. Um, so before we get into 2017 through current, before 2017 um, basically of course I was a kid, grew up, very nice household and everything like that. Um, skipping forward to 2015, I graduated from high school. Uh, I'm not going to say which one. Um, I used to say it in my past videos, you can look at that, but I'm not going to mention it in this video. Um, so yeah, I graduated from high school in 2015, like I said, and then I moved on, um, celebrated my summer and stuff like that, and in fall 2015, I completed my first semester of college um, at a community college, uh, very small, co or not small, but it's a big college, a lot of people go there and stuff, but I didn't have to pay as much for it. So that was the end of 2015, and I started to date and stuff like that. I did date during high school, but that's besides the point. Beginning of 2016, I don't really remember much of beginning of 2016, to be honest. I know that that was, um, yes, I do actually remember. So that was my second semester of college, and when I went to college, I went to major in child care, uh, early childhood education, excuse me. And I completed my first semester with flying colors, like I passed on my classes and everything. And then I went into my second semester and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't get all the work done. I felt like that I wasn't in the right major and everything. And I felt very lost. I felt like that I wasn't going to be able to find what my career path was going to be. Because at this time, my sister... She was in college, she was doing her own thing, so I felt kind of, not jealous, but like, envious of everyone else that was in college 
they kind of knew what they were going for. And the people in my major kind of knew that they wanted to do early childhood education but always complained about the work and stuff. I mean, I did too, but I had a feeling inside of me that early childhood education just wasn't for me. Maybe it was a time in senior, um, my senior year where I did an internship and it was just something to do to add to my resume. Because uh, I did work at a child care center in my senior year, which prompted me to be like, I want to be a daycare teacher. So I went to college for it and then soon realized that it just wasn't for me. And because of that, I got really, I wasn't in the right headspace either. And I've grown a lot since then, which we'll talk about. <laughs> um, but that was my first time in the hospital that year. Um, actually, that was the second time because it was my first time was in high school. Yep, in 2014 or 2013, one of those years. And then in 2016, beginning of 2017, 2017, uh, 2016. Oh my goodness! So the beginning of 2016 was my second semester of college. I didn't complete it. And I ended up getting admitted to a psychiatric, I can't talk, psychiatric hospital. Um, and I was there for about a month. And then I did an outpatient program in the city over from me. And then after that, that was kind of like the beginning, I guess, of my recovery. But the difference between recovery and the beginning of your recovery, to me anyways, is that the beginning of your recovery... It's more or less just you going through the motions and not taking a lot of action in your own life. Like, I was just doing this outpatient program and all this other stuff just to get done and over with so that I could figure out what my career is and figure out my life. When in reality, I should have taken what I learned there and incorporated it into what I'm supposed to do with my life, if that makes any sense. Like, I wasn't taking that aspect and I wasn't taking the career aspect and mushing it together, they were just two separate things to me. Um, then the summer came around, that was fine, and then the end of 2016 was probably the beginning of the worst. Um, I got meshed up with a lot of weird people summer of 2016. I'm not gonna say weird because I don't know if any of them still watch my videos. Uh, I doubt it. I know that I know one subscriber that watches me that were in that group of friends, but he wasn't one of the, like, he, he was kind of toxic, not really. He was, like, on the low end, but, um, there was some really toxic people in this group of people that I was in. But you might be thinking, okay, you could have just left them and find some other friends. Well, it was all through online. I met all these people through um, a live stream app called You Now, and at that time I was really, really into it, and I thought it was great. I thought it was so cool to watch people live stream and watch them with their daily lives, like what they do and stuff like that, talk to people and make some friends. But I took it too far, and it became an addiction for me, um, which is why so much nowadays I try not to be so connected online. I try to make sure I put my highlights of my life out there, but I kind of remain all of my other shit going on in my life to the people that actually care about me, not so much people online. But I feel like you guys care about me enough to subscribe to me or click on this video, so that's why I'm sharing my story with you guys today. Um. So going back to the people that I used to talk to, basically I would video chat with these people. It was a group of like 20 people, which is insane. I would only talk to like 10 of them were like my closest, and then the other 10 were just like friends of friends. But overall, it was like 20 people all together that I would talk to, and like I pretended to be my friend and stuff, but they all lived in different parts of the world. Like, though I had some friends from like England. I'm gonna say friends because they weren't really friends. I don't, I'm not friends with them now. I had friends from England. I had friends from um, all over the United States, in Canada, um, in Mexico. <laughs> like, I had all these people. Not all of them video chatted with me in these groups, but I just had like all these people that I thought were like my best friends. And I. <laughs> I apologize, my dog sometimes does this. No, I'm doing a video. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Whenever he gets a bad dream, he sometimes does that. And I got a message on my phone. 
Lovely. So many interruptions. <laughs> um, but anyways, and he didn't actually bite me, he just kind of like growls at me. Um, I think I accidentally like touched a weak spot on his back or something because I was like petting him and stuff, but anywho. Um, so that was the end of 2016 where I got mixed up with the wrong people, but also from like the summer of 2016 to like November of 2016, I was just like super addicted. I lived on the third floor of my house. I'm on the second floor, which I kind of like better because I feel more connected to my family and stuff. When I'm on the third floor, like if I ever live up there again, I'm only going to make that my apartment and I'm going to make the downstairs like the community area that I'll always be in and then if I ever need alone time or if I ever want to just go work like I'll have like an office up there if I ever want to relax I'll have that and then of course my bed um I want to make it like an apartment up there the next time that I'm up there but I kind of abused that freedom when I was living on the third floor it was like I felt like I could do anything up there and do whatever I wanted, but when I did whatever I wanted, it wasn't the right thing to do, which was video chatting with these people 24-7, like, at, like, at the most. Like, sometimes it would be for 12 hours, sometimes for just two, sometimes for however long, but I don't think, yeah, I was starting to go to school. Uh, at that time too, so yes, I was going to school, and I was video chatting with these people, like, I would be doing homework while video chatting with these people. Obviously, when I was at school, which was only two days a week, like, I would go to school and come home and video chat with people, and video chat with them whenever I did something, whether I was watching a movie, whether I was filming a video, like, at that time, I used to film videos, while I was on chat with them, or I just wouldn't film videos at all and just get caught up with the video chatting. It was kind of becoming my, like, what people turn to drugs or alcohol. For me, it was the video chatting, because I wanted to feel accepted. I wanted to feel loved. I wanted to feel that feeling that I wasn't giving to myself that I thought that I could give to other people. So, long story short, because of this constant addiction, in the end of it, I got really scared. Uh, cops got involved, or not involved, but like mentioned in a video chat, which really scared me. And I had my first ever, like, really bad panic attack thing in front of my friends at that time. And it was scary. I'm, I'm betting those people are scarred from what they saw. But it was totally unhealthy and it was because of the fact that I wasn't having a healthy relationship with social media, which was a huge thing in my recovery, which I'll go over in a second. But man, it was just awful. My first time in the hospital was because I was hearing voices. The second time was just because I was just lost and ugh, I was starting to hear voices a little bit, went back. This time, like, it was just a major, kind of like the, if you know, like, in a plot line of story it's like leads up and stuff and at the top there's the climax this was my breaking point excuse me breakdown um climax whatever you want to call it that made me go straight to the hospital so I literally went to the hospital not too long after that I was taken like social media was taken away from me um, after I went to the hospital in January 2017, um, which is what I'm actually going to get into. So I'm going to, uh, go through these by year. And I called, uh, 27, sorry for my phone. Um, I always used to check it, but now I just leave it. And if I know that there's a notification, I'm like, okay. Wow, I'm really popular. <laughs> um, in 2017, I call it the struggling year. This was before... I knew how much hard work it took to do like to actually accomplish your recovery and in 2017 um, I ran away from my home twice with an unsafe man again I won't mention any names but yes I was going to a program 
Um, like it was kind of like an outpatient program again, just like I did the last time I was in the hospital in this story timeline. And I really liked it. I really enjoyed attending the support groups. Like it was really great. I loved the art therapy group and stuff. Um, but I got mixed up again with the wrong people. And long story short, I followed this man home with his friend while I was at this outpatient program. Didn't even think that anything was wrong with it. I knew deep down inside of me, like my gut or intuition, whatever you want to call it, was screaming internally saying, don't go. But I ignored it. I totally was like, fuck it. Sorry for the language, but fuck it. I don't care enough about myself, and I don't care enough about my life. I don't even care enough about my safety that I'm going to go follow this man and his friend and trust them even though I just met them. Like, what? Like, looking back at me then, I am mad at myself. I know what I did wrong. And three, I know that now, if I was who I am after this recovery process then, I would have said hell no. And I would have run back in to the center. I would have just said, like, I gotta go to the bathroom or something. Because I wouldn't be able to say no. I'm not that at that point yet where I could confidently say no. But if I was in that situation again, I would have said I'm gonna go to the bathroom. And tell them to wait outside for me. But immediately go to somebody, like, that was in charge of the program and tell them I feel unsafe. I feel like this guy is trying to lure me in. I feel like da-da-da. But I didn't know at the time what he would do, but he was telling me to go to his house, which again, he was way older than me at that time. Big red flag. So if that was me currently at that time, I would have told somebody immediately. And that's what I'd say for any of you guys that has had, had that happen, or if that ever happens to you. Just give an excuse of something. Say if they come up to you on the street and say that. If they come up to you on the street, I would just run. Like, and have your phone on you, dial 911 as quickly as possible, and, like, call them and be like, I'm getting chased right now. And, like, tell them what's going on. Because you don't want to be stuck with those kind of people. You never want to trust somebody you just met. You trust somebody after, like, a month of knowing them. Like, that's in my sort of rule. I trust them after a month of knowing them. On circum like with circumstances though if I know that they've done a couple of things wrong to me I'm not gonna fully trust them in a month but I know that like I could still be acquaintances with them if that makes any sense so because of that um, the police found me because I was a missing person the second time I ran away the first time I ran away my parents found me and I was brought home all I remember was just coming into my room crying to my mom I kind of erased that whole night out of my head because I don't want to be triggered by that but at the same time I look back on it and say wow I've grown as a better person I have I am honestly so damn proud of myself like I used to be a mess and now I've worked so hard and I'm now starting to realize that like over the past couple of months I've realized holy shit I ran away with an unsafe man two years ago. Like, this was in January of this year that I was thinking back. I was like, holy shit. But, at the same time, I'm like, holy shit. Like, I have gotten so much better. And I, like, I'm always proud of myself for it. My current boyfriend right now, Sean, he's so proud of me for it too. My family is so proud of me for it. My boyfriend's parents are so proud of me for it. My Even my mental health team. Like, everybody that I know that cares about me, that I know cares about me in my life, are super proud of me. Because they can see a change. And I want you to know that recovery is hard work, but you will see a change in like two years, like I did. Um... So because of the second time, when I ran away, I was a missing person. Going back to that, I was a missing person. And basically what happened is I was brought from the police into an ambulance. And I was on 24-hour watch in a hospital. And they brought me home with my mom, which then she would have to watch me 
for 24 hours every single day which now she is the nanny of my nieces which kind of happened she had to quit her job to nanny my nieces because my sister needed help to find a nanny which kind of worked out because she needed to watch me so long story short every single day I was with my mom this was from January of 2017 through April of 2017 I was with my mom every single day um, no more social media. I was off social media altogether. But I watch Kaylin Nicholson a lot. As you guys know, I mentioned her a lot, but I, like, I, the only thing I was allowed to use or whatever was YouTube. Like, my parents let me u use YouTube because they knew it was, like, I preferred YouTube over TV. So they said that that was fine as long as I didn't post videos. No posting videos, no social media. Like, I had to follow those rules, and I did. Um, and so, basically, I would watch Kayla Nicholson a lot. Obviously, I watched other YouTubers as well for entertainment and stuff like that, but Kaylin was my mentor. And Kaylin, I doubt you're watching this, but if you happen to, uh, I will send you this video probably through Instagram or whatever. I doubt that you'll have time to see it, but if you do, that would be a dream come true. But honestly, Kaylin, you... I know you always say that you wish that you changed somebody's life for the better, at least one person. You changed my life completely 360 for the better. You were like my mentor without even having to be here physically with me. Because I listened to you, I took your advice, and you're probably, besides obviously my hard work, you're probably the main inspiration for what I have gone through and what I have worked so hard for and I will continue to the day I die be a big fan be the biggest supporter of you but also I would one day want to be your best friend we are very similar in age and uh, like you have helped me so much and I can't ever be more grateful than to say that out loud because you literally saved my life. You saved me from going back. You saved me from being so negative on myself. But of course it was my doing to get that there. But without your inspiration, I'm saying, I want to be where I am today. Um, and then in April of 2017 through July of 2017, I started to get Department of Mental Health Services. So I was meeting with somebody once a week, um, typically at my house or whatever. Um, and yeah, so that's what happened then. And then in July to December of 2017, I was going to a clubhouse throughout the week. It started off with only a couple days a week. Excuse me, and then I started to go every single day. Um, and then I got services not only with Department of Mental Health, but also with a um, kind of outpatient program, it's more like a community services program um, called Alternatives. And that was 2017. It was very much the beginning stages of a lot of crying, a lot of pain, a lot of learning, a lot of just venting to my mom a lot spending time with my nieces and just overall just you know struggling but I needed to have a year of struggle in order to be where I am right now in 2018 was my transforming year and that was the year I definitely worked my ass off the most. I definitely worked my work my ass off every single day still, but that was my start of working my ass off to be where I am today. Um, in January though, the big upset that happened was I was kicked out of the clubhouse. I'm not going to say any reasons. Again, I won't say any names. I won't even name the clubhouse name. But yes, I was kicked out of a program, which has never happened in my life. But I also didn't like the program, so I kind of cheated the system in a way, and I'm laughing at it now, but at that time it was really serious that I did that. And, um, yeah. But, um, 
around that time too I was wanting so bad to figure out why I struggle in January because January and February, like winter months in general, are my hardest times of year. Like it's usually after Christmas till like March that I'm like super low in the dumps. And ironically I'm usually single around those times for some reason. But hopefully I'm not single <laughs> by then and maybe I'll have better, um, better times in the winter months. But I always try to figure out why I was struggling. I did kind of pinpoint an answer, but I won't share it in this video. And I got my first Social Security income check that month because my mom and I, all of 2017, were applying, getting myself set up for Social Security income because I wasn't, I didn't have a job and I was still trying to figure myself out. So at that time, I was trying to apply for it and I got approved and in January was my first check which was a huge accomplishment for me to finally have some income in my life to you know just have the basic stuff maybe a few spending money but enough so then I could feel like I have a purpose rather than just kind of following my mom through life or having her be like my teacher throughout life. From January to May I took my first a dialectical behavioral therapy course. That course, because it was so good, I took it again. <laughs> and if you guys don't know what DBT is, I'm not going to get into it in this video, but if you would like me to make a video on it, leave a like or leave a comment down below because it's very interesting and it's all about how to take what you feel and turn it into action. And it's like, because it's called dialectical, two sides, behavioral, therapy. You obviously know what therapy is. But um, I can get into a whole different video on that, but those classes were so good. Like I learned so much about sensory boxes. I learned so much about um, social skills. I learned so much about um, just like everything that like I needed to know to quick in the recovery process, basically. Um, still know the social media and still watched Kayla Nicholson videos, um, but in June of 2018 I started uh, Riverside Services, which was a different program than Alternatives because they had like this contract thing I remember where they flipped from Alternatives to Riverside, whoever's the main one. So that year Alternatives transitioned over to Riverside, so I had a big change there of new people and everything. One thing I forgot to mention in my notes that I just realized is that starting in 2017, when I started to get DMH services and I started to see alternatives and all that, um, I started to have team meetings every month or every other month with my mental health team, and I feel like that that sort of having that support team and having just like a monthly meeting, I guess, every month was good for me to like reflect, figure out what I need to do the next month, and just figure out the future stuff as well. It was just kind of like a good kind of, you know, good reflection, a good plan of action to go through um, with my support team, and it was really, really helpful. In 2018, I did lots of reading. As you can see, I love books. Um, lots of art. I soon realized in 2018 that art is my passion. Uh, journaling and working on myself a lot. In October, I had my first boyfriend since 2016, which was a huge, huge change because I was so used to being alone, no friends or anything. And I met him in a grocery store and basically we just kind of hit it off. We always had to talk on the home phone and stuff like that. Um, he got to meet my parents and all that. Uh, and then my second niece was born, which was also a huge change because it was just another baby in the family, so that was really nice. But with this boyfriend, again, we'll not name any names, <laughs> with this boyfriend, um, it was just very toxic and he disrespected my family. I'm not going to mention all the other things I wrote down because I realized how personal it is. 
but it was just a very toxic relationship that I didn't need, I didn't want, and I needed to let go of. So it took me about a week to realize that I should break up with him. And in November 2018, I called him on the phone and I was the one to break up with him, which was honestly a huge point in my, not only my recovery, but also for myself because I had always been the one to wait for the guy to break up with me or the guy would break up with me or whatever. I was never the type of person <laughs> that would break up with a guy. Unless it was like in sixth grade and it was like a day boyfriend that you had and then I was like, oh, you were talking to this girl and then I broke up with him. Like, no. Like, kind of serious relationships that I was in. I would let the guy or the guy would break up with me first. Um, this was the first time that I had ever broken up with somebody. And it was a big part of growing up, too, that sometimes you just need to do it yourself. <laughs> um... And then and also in November, I got back on social media, and I got my first job at a uh, play center, and I started driving lessons, which was a huge point in my recovery. Like, I felt like that I could do it. Um, so, come 2019, I call this year the independent year, because I feel like I'm alone a lot, but when I'm alone, it's not like I'm struggling, and it's not like I feel lonely. I feel very content with myself and I love myself for who I am and what I do every day and when I film videos and when I work on art and when I work on my church stuff like I feel like I have a purpose being a part of all this stuff um, and in January uh, through March of this year um, I was working I was on social media but I was also recovering from the last boyfriend I was in very intense therapy sessions about this boyfriend because it was a big change in my life, a new relationship, but also he did a lot of toxic things to me. I did too towards him, but it was a lot, like he did a lot <laughs> to me and it really scarred me. And so I did a lot of recovery for those three months. Uh, but March was probably the most, so far, the most life-changing month of this year because I quit my job and I quit my driving lessons. I, I could go into a whole different video about why I quit my driving lessons, and I do not plan to drive, ever, <laughs> for that matter. Um, I've kind of made that decision because- Hey guys, so different angle and everything, my memory card got full, so I'm gonna have to export all this together, and all that kind of stuff, but it's okay. So I'm just gonna record this last little part. I was literally almost done, <laughs> but of course my camera did that, so, um... But yeah, so I could, like I said, I could do a whole different video of why I quit my driving lessons. But all in all, I quit my job because they weren't putting in enough hours for me, and so I felt very responsible with doing that. And also, I quit my driving lessons because, um, well, if you guys want me to do a video on that, let me know. Because there's a lot to go into, <laughs> into it. Um, and then from March to May... Um, I had better friendships, I was, I'm preparing for my Riverside graduation, um, and yeah, and then the end of March, I started dating a man named Sean, um, and that was a huge change for me, especially because of my ex, and my recent ex, I should say, um, and on April 19th, I made it official with this guy, and I was very much more responsible about it, I guess. Like, I waited a few weeks until I decided to ask him. <laughs> or, I, I forget who asked each other. I feel like it was me. But, yeah. So, currently in my life, I'm on a healthy diet. I do healthy habits. I wake up early and all that kind of stuff. Um, I do YouTube, obviously. <laughs> I do church work. Um, I kind of, like, make the bulletins in order of worship. I'm a Sunday school teacher and everything like that. Um, I have Star Sketch, which has been awesome. Like, I have my Etsy shop, which I'll link down below. I have my Threadless shop, which I'll talk more about that at the end of this video. Link down below. And I have Sean, my boyfriend. He's been amazingly supportive of everything that I do, and I feel like this is the most healthiest relationship I have ever been in. Um, and then friends and family, of course. 
Um, so yeah, that's my two years of recovery. If you guys want me to get into more details about anything, of course, I still have my coping skills, which I've done a coping skills video already. Again, I will have it linked down below and in the eye uh, button thing. But I want to talk about my Threadless account or uh, shop that I have. So I have my Etsy shop, which is all my original artwork on canvas and everything. But on Threadless, again, I'm not sponsored. On Threadless, you can sell your art on shirts, on uh, iPhone cases, on school supplies, on rugs, shower curtains, tapestries. You can have prints on there. You can um, have it in, I have in women's and men's clothing. Um, you can also do kids clothing, but I don't do that for my art. <laughs> Um, and you can do all sorts of stuff. And there's so many things on there that you can have my art on. You can even have just a simple laptop sticker for $2. But it would mean the world to me if you guys would check out my Threadless shop. Because everything is super affordable. And you would even have a piece of my art. Um, it may not be the original that I put up on Etsy. But it is something that you can have, whether it's on your laptop as a sticker, whether it's a skateboard for you to write on. Yeah, they sell skateboards with my art on it, which is insane. Um, or you can even have a notebook that has my art on it, which is insane. So again, I will link my shop down below. Um, so you guys can please, 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 please check that out. And without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed this long ass video. And... I will see you in the next one, which will be all about overall mental health tips. So you guys can take in this recovery and like recovery story. And next week I'll give you actual tips on how I deal with my mental health on a daily basis. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and actually no, sorry, mental health tips will be after the next uh, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. The next video is actually going to be a sensory box video with all of what's in my sensory box. So I'm excited about that. So I'll be doing a sensory box video first, and then the mental health tip. Sorry, I was reading off my calendar. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you guys later. Mwah! Bye, little stars!